What's up, everybody? Mark with Cardivox Academy, and today we are going to be checking out Whitechapel, A Visceral Wretch. I'm very excited because this is apparently a call to heavier times uh, that I have been looking forward to. Now, if you're new to the channel, I am a full-time harsh metal vocal coach teaching people how to do stuff like this. <laughs> safely and efficiently so they can pursue their metal vocal dreams. And here we focus on uh, harsh vocal education. So let's do it. Let's listen to Whitechapel, A Visceral Wretch, and uh, let's see what we can learn. Here we go. Okay, so like I said at the beginning of the video, this channel is focused on harsh vocal education, so I will be pausing the video um, for uh, breaks to talk about education, to hopefully teach you something, to make this entertaining and educational at the same time. Um, if you want commentary-free versions of this, this is my favorite line. Check out Spotify. Uh, this ain't it. Um, but holy cow. Okay, so I got to get a couple things out of the way first. This not only, so, you know, <clears throat> we, we've had Phil on the channel a couple times. Um, and I think I might've heard this song before. Cause I remember when they were working on it, um, in the studio, he sent me like a pre pro version, but it was like a phone recording. Like he texted me a phone recording of the audio. So it was kind of hard to hear. So <laughs> maybe I've heard this before, but it's in this polished form. It's awesome. There are so many things that are a throwback, not just to old white chapel, um, but old death core. And, and I want to kind of talk about those a little bit as well, because, you know, ever since, um, you know, uh, the past like three or four years, really since since uh, the whole pandemic thing happened, there have been a lot of younger people who have gotten into deathcore and death metal, and there are sounds they may not be aware of. So not only is this a, is this a throwback to old Whitechapel because of the riffing, because of the aggression, because of the heavy moments, but also it's a very big throwback to the way that um deathcore vocals used to work. Now I'm sure we're going to get more dynamic, but we don't need to actually. We don't have to. But back in the day of metal deathcore all these different genres especially in, in in deathcore there were you had your three vocals right you had your low you had your mid you had your high and most of the time those vocals were completely separate from each other put on different tracks which is still kind of the case now um but you know the vocalist would use the low and then switch to the high and then the mid and it was those things very very distinctly nowadays we get a lot of blending we get a lot of slurring of these sounds together right so here we open up with a very, I don't want to say typical actually, because it's not. Um, Phil is definitely hitting a lot of spaces that either I haven't heard him hit for a while or um, that are relatively new. Like his high vocals sound kind of new, but the first thing we hear is this really deep, really long low that he sort of slowly, 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 slowly pitches down, right? Now there are a couple things I want to talk to you about how we're going to do that, right? How do we pitch our lows down? Well, there are a couple things we need to think about, right? First and foremost, and oh, there's a smudge on my screen. Oh, dear. Um, first and foremost, now we're not going to go into like this really long in-depth um, like phys like vocal physics aerodynamics lesson. That's what the one-on-one -on -one lessons are for. Um, <clears throat> but I am going to give you just a brief a brief tidbit. So generally speaking, and you know, there are, there are always exceptions to things, but when we're thinking about our voice, especially when we're new, let's think about what creates high frequencies and low frequencies, right? Well, low frequencies are going to come from lower rates of vibration, right? 
So sometimes <clears throat> when we're pitching these vocals down, we're actually getting a little bit quieter and we're not pressing into them as hard. Now, I'm not going to sound like Phil because Phil's been doing vocals for longer than me and perfecting his own style. I'm going to do my own thing. But if I take like a low vocal, right, if I take that and I slowly pitch it down and then back up, you may not be able to hear it because once this gets posted, you know, I'll have done some audio treatment to it. It'll be, you know, gone through some compressors and things. But um, the volume dropped a little bit and I was pressing in a lot less hard. And if I'm going to go really low, you know, when I'm doing that, there's a lot less pressure than you may think, right? Because my goal is for those tissues to flap slowly. The other thing is you're going to need a vocal that is more compressed, right? You're going to need a, a vocal that's more compressed. So like something like a very open, relaxed false, like just, just breath distorted false chord. That's going to be a lot harder to, to pitch down like that because you need more time. And a false chord runs out of air. Like if it's just no bells and whistles, runs out of air pretty quickly. So that was fucking awesome. Uh, freaking awesome. Whoops. Um, And he really brought it to a place that was gnarly right we're going to talk about the mids and the lows or i'm sorry the mids and the highs a little later once i've had more time to digest him i want to jump back into this song but yeah this is dirty this is some dirty stuff and phil has such a way of taking his distortion and making it really sound like pure noise right like my my voice is always very chunky everything i do has a lot of like you know you can hear all the little flappy jibbly bits but with his tone it's just like it's amazing. I absolutely love it. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, so there are two things that are true. One, we're going to talk about mids. But two, I, <laughs> I was too distracted by how dope that was. I'm not even going to lie to you. Uh, my vocal coach, my vocal, co my vocal coach, my vocal coach ears turned off and I just really got into it. Which, let me tell you something. When you have done over 400 or close to 400 vocal analysis videos, sometimes songs cease to surprise you sometimes songs cease to surprise you but that was disgusting right <clears throat> so let's talk god uh where i i want to go back and listen to it again because again my um i want to be more analytical um so i want to focus a little bit more but um let's talk mids let's talk mids right so pretty much everything we're hearing phil do here and this is this is no surprise is is a very compressed sound now what do we what do we mean when we talk about compression in our voice and what do we mean when we apply it to harsh vocals well compression is kind of a weird term vocally uh it has its critics and i see some of those criticisms but i can't think of a better term uh right so when we're talking about compression um it can summon up these uh it can summon up these ideas of tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of pressure and we do know that harsh vocalization often comes with more pressure under the tissues that we're using these tissues are called the supraglottal tissues they're the arytenoids the area epiglottic folds um the uh, the false folds i don't think the uh, epiglottis counts as a supraglottal tissue as far as i know um, could be wrong, but we are often closing up those tissues and putting pressure behind them. But when we use the term compression, I think sometimes it paints this picture that we need a lot more than we do. 
when we're talking about vocal compression, what we're talking about is we're talking about holding back a little bit of the air. We're talking about letting there be a little bit of air pressure build up underneath those tissues. This is something that when we use our true vocal folds, which you hear me speaking with now, can be a risky game, right? It can be a risky game because too much pressure under the uh, vocal folds, especially because to do that, we would have to press the vocal cords together really hard and they go from moving nice and smoothly to having a little bit more chatter on the edge of them. That can be risky. However, um, from what we know scientifically up until this point, um, it's it's pretty reasonably safe to do if done properly with these tissues above, right? Now, the reason that it's compressing is because your diaphragm, as we utilize, um, as we utilize, you know, these techniques that are less, you know, <laughs> and more <laughs> like those types of uh, tones, which we, which we can hold out longer, right? The reason it's compressing is because, of course, you know, these tissues, whoops, these tissues above the vocal folds are eh, closed up, right? And then the diaphragm underneath, when we breathe in, our diaphragm contracts and depresses, it gets flat. And then as we squeeze our abdominal muscles and our ribs draw in, it's going to cause that diaphragm to sort of press upwards. Normally, when we exhale, our diaphragm just relaxes, but we as vocalists are using it a, di a different way. And so if you think about resistance up here, pressure under here, boom, the air in this space is getting compressed, right? So <clears throat> that's one of the main things that you need to understand. And I know that I kind of talked a lot, but if you want to understand Phil's voice from a more in-depth level, you, that's, just, that's the thing you need to understand because it's very characteristic of his sound. This is very common in most genres of metal. And to be honest, another tricky thing about the term compression is that like when I'm talking, there's a little bit of resistance to the airflow from my vocal folds. So am I using compression now? You understand why it can be overly broad, but if we just don't think about it too hard, uh, we can say that this, uh, not very compressed, this, uh, more compressed, right? And he has a lot of that going on. Now, one of the ways, uh, one of the benefits of the way he does lows and mids, and this is very similar to the way that me and a lot of other vocalists do it as well, although we have very different sounds, is that the low and the mid tone aren't really that fundamentally different from each other. What I mean by this, is if I take a really, really deep low, like a If I take that sound and I stop doing like cool stuff with like my tongue and my lips and my jaw and I just open it up, it's gonna sound more like a mid, even though I'm not really changing much in here. There's probably a little bit of laryngeal movement we can we can find out together, but it's nothing drastic, right? So here's that super deep low. Um <laughs> No, the lyrics is doing the exact same thing, kind of like lifting up a little bit as I do all those vocals. Um, so that's that's a really strong suit that he has. And part of the way he's able to switch between those lows and those mids really, really easily. And that's something that you should think about for your voice as well. If you want to be very, very dynamic, if you want to have a lot of fluidity in your voice, you know, think about not like just find a good tone, but don't make a lot of the change here. Make it up here. Make it up here. Whoa. <laughs> That'll make a big difference. And we hear that here. I want to go back, like I said, because I got to hear this. Um, I don't know. One, 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 two, one, twenty three, because it's sequential. One, two, three. Let's go back there. <laughs>
having a lot. I'm sorry. I said I was going to focus, but I, it, it, you know, it demanded the sword. It demanded the sword. If you've been watching the channel for long enough, you know I, I reserve the sword for the songs that I feel really deserve it. And let me tell you, nobody's lost their touch in this band. That's for damn sure. He's doing a lot of this like, he's doing a lot of these movements, which I'm really appreciating because here's the thing, right? Now, I've obviously built my whole platform on metal. I teach harsh metal vocals full time for my job, how I pay my bills. So obviously I love metal, but one thing that can be kind of tricky, especially when you're making just like riffy, chunky, disgusting stuff like this, is keeping it interesting, not being too like, you know, and so these slight, like, well, not slight, they're very in your face. These crescendos, these opening, the opens up, closes down. It's really adding a lot of dynamic movement to the song and it's making the vocals very, very, very interesting to listen to. He's not really doing anything like super fundamental, right? This would be a hard song for a new vocalist to do, which I'm sure all of you are out there like, duh. But listen, when you've done lessons for as long as I have, you'd be surprised how many people with no experience think that they can do this in a couple weeks. <laughs> it ain't happening, right? There was a high vocal that came in there that I really, I really liked the onset. It was just a texture. We're gonna listen to it again. And if you don't like it, I don't care. Um, there was a high vocal that came in. Eh, ooh, mm. Ugh, just dirty gross it's like somebody dropped a piece of candy in, in the dirt but it still tastes good you know what i'm saying So these two things, they, they, mm, mm, mm. I'll say these two things very, very quickly. The first thing is, yeah, that high vocal that comes in, even that high vocal has like this, right? It comes out of nowhere. Sick, right? I don't know if he tunnels it. That's just a habit of mine. More like that, right? But that sounds really, really cool. We'll talk about highs at the end, but I want to wait until a high is more in the front. But you can see, even with his like little vocals that come in, you know, sort of in from, you know, in from the side and then and then sort of like acting as a layer over top. OK, even that we have this like wow, this really dynamic opening and closing, opening and closing. And that's the important thing to all my metal vocalists out there, my friends, my comrades. Listen, here's the thing. We are almost all of us, if we're in the death metal and the death core scope of things, looking for screams that have no audible pitch that we can hear, right? Of course, everything has pitch. This, pfft, you could find, if you put it into something and find like a fundamental pitch in there, of course. But to our ear, we, I couldn't hear these and like sit down at a piano and play them, right? This being said, again, this isn't a criticism of the art form. It just is what it is. You're going to sound a lot like somebody else right? Like I have a handful of people that I sound a lot like, and this is just how it is. So you have to think about like, like if you're writing metal songs and you're sitting down and you know, you just kind of go with the first draft, you may come up with something awesome, but are you going to come up with something that's going to make people be like, Oh, that's this guy. Oh, that's him. That's his signature style. That's, that's something that we hear him do. That is like, like Randy Blythe. Like we all know it's Randy Blythe. And part of that is the tone, but part of that is the way he chews on his vocals. Um, you know, we, we all know, um, 
uh, Phil, Bo I'm spacing Phil Bozeman, the person in this, in this, because he has such a distinct mid tone, such a like, Rawr! and he's the first person. I'm sure he's not the first person ever to do it, but he's the first person I ever noticed to curl the lips in on his mids and lows. Rawr! 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 Most of the time up until that point, I'd see people puckering him out. And it creates a little bit of a different timbre to the pitch, right? Um, so it's really cool. Another thing that I think he's doing, I'm not super confident on this. It's a little hard to tell. Oftentimes with our low vocals, we want to have a really big open chamber, right? So even if I do something like, you know, the the the, the aperture or the embouchure, like the the space, the the distance, yeah, aperture is the right word, Ooh, is very small. But if I open up my lips, you'll see that my mouth is open quite quite wide, right? So, uh, my jaw is not dropping. Uh, we can break that rule, though, if we have a good enough understanding of airflow. It creates a very tight low oh, i'm sorry i'm sorry like a, a tight and quiet low vocal this was really big in uh cj era lorna shore <clears throat> right um but instead of like these big we have more of like an airy like it's it's not really my thing but i'll give it a try so instead of it's close yeah there we go so right there everything's really really closed but what i am doing is i'm kind of opening up this space not so much that it's a strain and I'm actually purposely pushing air through that, right? Sorry, I did that right on the mic. That might be a pain on your ears. I apologize. But you get like this sort of sound. And that can actually sound really, really cool. And that's really, that's really, really close. And so I think I'm hearing him do some of that here. Um, but again, we've got multiple vocal layers. So it's a little hard to tell. And it's only my first listen through, uh, but uh, I'm gonna shut up. Let's keep going. Yo, who else feels like they need to brush their teeth after that? God dang. God dang. Whew, that's dirty. That is dirty. Eesh. God. Yuck. But in such a good way. If for some reason you're not a metal fan and you found yourself to this video and you think when I say yuck and gross, I'm insulting it. The, the people in the metal community understand that this is high praise. <laughs> this is if I call the song gross or disgusting or nasty or stinky. Um, it's very, very good. It's a very good thing. If somebody tells you your vocals are stanky or uh, if they're disgusting, then you're doing a great job. Um, I heard him almost doing like a pitch fry tone in there. Is that right? Did I hear that right? I don't know. I don't know where it is. This video is already getting on too long, and I've got, I've got a lot of work to do today. Um, we're uh, my band Kardashev, which is also on Metal Blade Records. We're uh, playing in Germany in a week, 
to a week and a day. And so prepping for that has been a, has been a beast. Um, but so I'm not going to go back, but like, it was really interesting. It was a sound. I feel like I have not heard from him before. Maybe it was the production on the voice. Maybe it was just like the EQ and like the exciters or something. I don't know, but I feel like it was a new thing. Somebody also told me that he does the cheek pull in this video. I didn't see it. The cheek pull is something I do a lot. I'm not the first person to have done it. I think I've heard that Mike Patton has done it before. But it's when you pull on your cheeks to change the sound of your, your scream. <laughs> Somebody was saying he did that. I didn't see it, but <clears throat> maybe I missed it. Um, I want to talk about highs a little bit before. Um, I want to talk about highs a little bit before uh, we wrap up this video. So one thing about highs that's really cool is that you can do a lot of stuff with your soft palette that like would break the rules of singing. Like one thing, and it is okay, well, the rules of singing. Okay. Uh, it goes against common convention. Let's put it that way. Um, but one thing you hear a lot in <clears throat> like the clean singing, clean singing world is raise your soft palette, raise your soft palette. But what if I don't? How about that? What about that? What if I don't, right? Well, if I have a high that's really open and wide and the soft palate is relatively raised, yeah, ah, but what if I drop that? What if I drop that and sort of think about squeezing it with the back of my mouth? Well, I mean, that sounds pretty cool myself. And I feel like I heard some of that um, coming from Phil just now. And I sounded awesome. I am looking forward to this album, y'all. Listen, here's the thing. The Valley was amazing. Kin was amazing. Great albums. But I ain't going to argue with the amount of heavy they're bringing to the table right now. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to it. This was a dope track. I'm very excited to hear um, <clears throat> what's coming down the pipe soon. With that being said, I do need to wrap this video up because, uh, like I said, we're doing some uh, we're doing some prep, and I got to make sure I got to make sure all my all my uh, uh, loose ends are tied before I leave. So if you enjoyed the video, like, share, and subscribe. If you like the way I talk about vocals and you want to take one on one lessons with me, I have done. I did the count recently; it's almost five thousand vocal lessons over the past four years or something like that. It's it's insane. Um, had a ton of students, seen a lot of success stories. You can check out our Cardbox alumni playlist here on the channel to get an idea of uh, people that I've helped. It's a mix of all skill levels, advanced and beginners alike. Um, and that's it. So beyond that, many thanks, much love, I'm out.